Hello everyone, welcome to Separate Platter. Let's see the question for today. What is PKI? PKI stands for Public Key Infrastructure. This is the underlying framework that enables entities to securely exchange information okay, using digital certificates. It helps establish communication between entities or parties that are previously unknown to each other. Like for example, say I want to uh, you know, travel in the flight or go get recruited by a company. They don't know me, but what I present to them is my passport or driver's license to authenticate my identity. And that, so the company that is recruiting you or in the, or at the airport, they do not trust you because they don't know you, but they trust the certificate. In this case, your passport or the government issued driver's license that you're showing to them. And then they authenticate your identity and then let you you know board the flight or recruit you in their company so in digital world that passport or the driver's license is nothing but a digital certificate so the digital certificate authenticates the identity of the user or server associated with the public key like i said before it's like a passport or a driver's license it uses x509 standard and digital certificate contains a copy of the entity's public key and the digital certificates are digitally signed by a certificate authority ca now let's see what is a certificate authority ca in common this is the one who verifies the identities of the requester or the entities. Once it is verified, it is responsible for issuing and revoking digital certificates. It is like the government issuing a passport or driver's license. Examples of certificate authority are like DigiCert, GoDaddy, right? Then we have something called as RA, that is Registration Authority. These are the authorities or entities that assist certificate authority to verify the identity of an entity. They do not create or issue a certificate. They just assist in verification. Now let's see how to issue a digital certificate. Let's assume there is a user or server. Let's call them a requester who wants to get a digital certificate. What do they first do? They create a message called CSR. That's a certificate signing request. What will the CSR have? It will have the details of the requester, like for example, their name, what is the server name, the email address, any identifying information, okay? And it will contain the requester's public key. Now the requester will send the CSR to the certificate authority. The requester can send this data to any certificate authority of their choice. Now the certificate authority has the CSR. It takes all the actions to validate the identity of the requester. Okay, if it needs more data, then it goes back to the requester and requests for more data and then finally verifies all the details. And if the CA finds the requester legit, it creates the digital certificate. First, the CA will take the public key of the requester and the identity information and put that in an X509 format. Now this X509 is sent through an encryption function where it encrypts this using its own private key, that is the CA's private key. So now there is a digitally signed digital certificate. Digitally signed when I say it is signed by the certificate authority. And then now the requester can distribute this certificate to its users. So to summarize the certificate issuing process, first is that the requester is sending all the details and the requester's public key to the certificate authority of their choice. The CA will verify the details that is sent by the requester. Once the CA verifies that the requester is legit, it will take the public key of the requester and the details of the requester, put it in a certificate, and then digitally sign this certificate using its own private key, and then give it to the user. That is the requester in this case. And then the requester can distribute this certificate to its users. 
So the digital certificate will have the requester's public key and also all the identifying information of the requester as well as an expiry date. When does this certificate expire? Now let's see how to revoke a digital certificate. Why do we want to revoke a digital certificate? Maybe the expiry date is over or the private key of the requester is compromised. So now you'll have to revoke the digital certificate so that it is not used for any malicious activity. There are two methods to do this. The first method is called CRL certificate revocation list. Here we include the certificate serial number in this list. The problem with this is that there is a time delay and it requires more network bandwidth as well. The next method is OCSP that is online certificate status protocol. OCSP provides certificate users with access to certificate status in real time. OK, this is like just querying it for the status online. It tells if the certificate is valid, invalid or unknown. And that's it for today. I will see you in the next video. Until then, bye bye.